Hi, this is Jack Westman for ESCANews.com here in Paris, France for the Electronic Sports World Cup 2014. Joining me this time is Jordan Nothing Gilbert of Cloud9, uh, one of two American teams playing here in the tournament. Jordan, first of all, uh, this is, you know, I don't know how many times you've been to the ESWC Paris now, but good to be back. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's like I love ESWC as in a tournament, as a name, as a brand. I don't love the Just Dance stage right next to us, yeah. but I am excited to be here at such a prestigious event. It's always pretty noisy around yeah, here, that's, isn't it? Yeah, that's the only real problem yeah. here. When was the first year you came to the SWC? Uh, I think it was like uh, 2008. Oh, wow. Like the so Mondul, du Paris, the like, pyramid grass thing. Right, right. Yeah. So when you were like 18 or so? Yeah, yeah, I think I was 17 at the time. And then the next one was the SWC San Jose, and then I did yeah. the SWC Disneyland. And so this might be my fifth, fourth or fifth, yeah. Okay, so well experienced Six. with the French. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so first of all, let's talk about Face It uh, last weekend. All righty. That's, you know, leading into this tournament. Um, so, not the best European tournament for you guys. I know you, you were pretty proud of kind of never having yeah. gone out in a group, but you did go out in the groups yeah. of, in, in Milan. Um, what went wrong for you guys over there? Yeah, um, definitely got a little complacent. I mean, it's not like we were playing any pushovers. LDLC at that tournament coming into it was considered a top three team in the world with how they've been playing lately. Yeah. Um, same with like Fnatic, even though we didn't have to play them. Virtus Pro was a little shakier, but for us particularly, um, well, I'll get my excuses off my chest first, and then go I'll go about it. the end game. The first couple <laughs> excuses were they had scheduled us to play Saturday, so we always have the two-day prior arrival deal, so we left Wednesday to arrive Thursday. Yeah. Well, after we had already booked our flight that previous week, they changed the format to us playing Friday morning, and right. our teammates arrived 9 p.m. on Thursday. So we literally, two people probably slept three hours before we actually played the first matches, and then we got there, and then we got delayed three hours. So we woke up at 8 to play at 9, and then didn't start till 12.30, so we were pretty tired. But uh, that was the first excuse. Um, <laughs> second more, excuse. How many more excuses? <laughs> well, second excuse for me was my personal in ears. Like I had a, my right in ear kept having problems with me on stage and all these noise problems. So first LDLC, uh, excuses aside, we didn't feel like we got that whomped. We lost some key rounds that just ruined our momentum. Uh, I remember on Dust Two, it was 16-11, and we lost two big eco rounds. Where yeah. you know. Shoulda, coulda, woulda, or whatever you want to say. It just we didn't feel that crushed by them. And then going into day two for Virtus Pro, um, we took them out on cash. We knew they're not that hot lately in terms of they just haven't been. I don't think performing that well in European online events. Yeah. So we felt pretty good against them. And then on Inferno, uh, no one's been playing us in America on Inferno. So we really had very limited practice on Inferno. I think we just came out a little stale. We I think we got it on our CT side. It was at six six one point, and then the last two rounds of the half were like. Uh, two on four, a one on two, and a one on two for us. They're like four on two for us. So we lost bad late rounds that normally is cloud nine. That's the rounds you see our team winning yeah. to come back from big matches. So that was unfortunate. I think the key word for us was just complacency for, right. for the group play. Because you guys are very proud of, of your ability to kind of rally in the clutch, right? Yeah, yeah. So I don't think we are so like, we want to get out of groups, we want to do well, but I don't think. I think if anything, it was just disheartening for our fans. I think we were able to read between the lines a little bit and see that we weren't playing our best. Right. Well, that's all in the past now. Yeah. Face it. Uh, you've been in Europe since then. Did yeah. you, you spent a couple of days in Milan or did you fly straight to Paris? Uh, we flew straight here. Um, unfortunately, uh, not to bash on Paris or anything, but there's not very good practice facilities here. Yeah. So we went to a place that was pretty cool called Meltdown. Yeah. Um, and they have a cool environment going, but it's not very conducive for, for Counter-Strike. They still have the 60 hertz monitors. Great place though, great people. I think um, it's going to be a cool place, like a barcraft place. So we, we were able to practice that day versus NIP. But we only had one day of practice, so we haven't really got the boot camp in, so to speak. But we were able to kind of theory craft a little the past couple of days in, and just kind of try to get ourselves in the right mindset. So hopefully that helps us all throughout today. Oh, so you've only so actually, if you've only had uh, maybe one day to actually play. Yeah, we haven't really had a boot camp or anything yet. Right, because I was going to ask you back in Cologne, I was talking to Semphis, and he said that he felt that all you guys really needed to break through and you know uh, win European events would be a really solid boot camp over in Europe. If you guys were able to yeah. spend two or three weeks here, you know, you'd, you'd improve yeah, dramatically. Yeah, definitely. But you, haven't, do you, you feel like you haven't really had that this time? We haven't had it, but we have gotten our heads in the game a little. And I think part of the reason we always want that boot camp is because at home, regardless of the talent pool at home, we literally just don't have a full 
routine each practice day. We don't know if we're going to play two maps or five maps or zero maps. We literally have played zero scrimmages some nights, sitting in there for three or four hours. So I think just having played Milan and got our heads in the game a little, spent yesterday, the last couple of days trying to deathmatch on, even if they're subpar setups. Yeah. So just trying to get our heads in the game a little. It's, it's definitely not optimal these, this past week, but yeah. Okay, well, it served you pretty well against Planet Key at the very least. Let's talk about uh, ESWC. Um, yeah. So you've just finished your first game against uh, Planet Key Dynamics, the German team. Yeah, on Inferno. <laughs> yeah. Um, it went pretty well. It was 16-10 in the end, but it should have been more. Yeah, yeah. We were at like 15-5, I think, or 15-6. Something like that. And then, yeah, the guy had a Tech-9 at B, and... He was shooting at one of my teammates, so I was like, oh, free knife kill. And then so did, I think Corey thought the same thing. And then all of a sudden, three of us died, four of us died down to one-on-one -on -one in Shroud, and then Shroud missed the frag, and we lost it. And we just kind of shaking our heads at ourselves. Hopefully that round doesn't, those rounds don't come to bite us in the end, because, yeah, I think it's a round Top total two, if there's minutes. a head-to-head -head tie yeah. or something. So hopefully we just put these matches away and take out. We got a tough match in Virtus Pro yeah. and LDLC. I think LDLC will be our toughest opponent. Yeah. Uh, Virtus Pro, I think they definitely had uh, a spark plug for them after Face It. I think that was a slap in their face for as well as ours. Right. So I think they're going to be someone that, you know, those guys got so much chemistry, you can't just count them out because they're playing bad, you know? Are they the only two threats you really see in your group? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, the other teams off. are teams that you don't see a lot in top level competition. Well, you've got the Indian team, uh, Virtual Impact, and the Portuguese team, yeah. uh, Alien Tech, right? Yeah, I think... Um, Just written them off as victories? I, I mean, kind of. It's like, it's, it would be like a, a team just from like a netcode or one of our American teams coming. They would have the ability to maybe win, but they don't, they don't really have the experience. You know, it's tough. So we're going to have to, we're not going to take them for granted. But as me and you were talking about before this interview, it might be better for ESWC to focus on the more competitive countries and open up more slots for maybe a Sweden or a... Or a uh, I don't know, France. Uh, I guess they have two for France or three? They've got three in this tournament. So that's good for them. Sweden, Denmark, maybe open up another Paris. What's up, Nathan, MBK? <laughs> good friend of mine. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Um, maybe they do want to open up more slots. Yeah, because, well, I, as we were saying, exactly. I mean, there are 24 teams in this tournament. There's uh, 50 grand prize money, right? It's yeah. almost a shame that... They, sh they should have the top 16 teams in the world here no matter yeah. what. And then the last eight maybe can be qualified through some Middle East, European, Eastern European or something qualifying. Yeah. Is there another North American team you'd, you'd include in this? Or are, are you and I by well, pretty much still in? Yeah, the like the, there's like there's skill. Though. Like the Netcode guys, some of the Elevate guys, they have skill. I would love to see them qualify for some events to get some more experience. It's hard because they don't have a lot of great uh, support. Yeah. So, um, you know... From the grapevine, I've heard there might be some changes, some merging happen with some of those teams. Right. Yeah, I would love to. I would love to have another good team to practice against. I mean, we had they give us good practice. They beat us sometimes, but it's just a different style of practice. Yeah, less intense. I think you yeah. mentioned in, in Cologne, right? Um, okay. Well, I, I won't keep you for much longer. I just want to talk about DreamHack uh, yeah. coming up at the end of the month. So. At the moment, you don't know whether you're flying back to the States and then coming back yeah. to DreamHack or yeah, staying here. Yeah, but regardless, we will have... It's a five-day boot camp Valve is providing the, the, all oh, really? the teams. They're, oh, right. they're paying for it. Is that new this year? That's new. So Valve's it's awesome by Valve. Uh, you know, I would still like to see that million-dollar tournament, Valve. Maybe four majors, one million-dollar tournament. That's besides <laughs> the point. Um, no, but they're doing a great job trying to support us. So I think every team that wants it gets a five-day boot camp at Inferno Online in Stockholm. Um, I'm sure some of the teams that live in the area might stay home or boot camp elsewhere because the only problem I really foresee is if you're all in the same room, a lot of scouting could happen, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, but it's awesome. So we might be going home. We're going to decide the next couple days. Otherwise, we might be staying at the Logitech office in Switzerland. Oh, wow. Yeah. Very nice. Otherwise, we will be going home for about 10 days and come back to Sweden. Okay. It's getting really noisy. I don't know what's going That's on. That's the party begin. <laughs> I know. The, pa the Parisians know how to do it. Uh, okay, so last question before I let you go is Cloud9 has a huge fan base. Uh, you guys, especially in Cologne, you guys were getting mobbed. It seemed more than any other team. Uh, has streaming kind of helped that? Do you feel like you have more fans now oh, yeah. than you've ever had in your career? Uh, well, probably. I mean, if, uh, 
in the 1.6 world, you always had your little niche communities. When I went to Sweden, I had a lot of fans, or maybe in like a certain German event. Yeah. But yeah, I think this is spreading our reach farther and bigger, for sure. And streaming in general, I encourage all the other pro teams, you know. I like the fact that Cloud9 is one of the main teams, because that means more exposure and visibility for us alone. Yeah. But I also think it would help the community to connect to all these personalities because the more they connect and they see a different side of us because I'm sitting there rapping and dancing and giving tips I'm informative and entertaining so I think it's just fun for them to see a different side connect and it is growing for us and it is awesome and I don't understand why the Nip guys don't do it more why the Fanatic guys don't do it more so I think all you sponsors out there you should acknowledge that Cloud9 is simply the best right now is that the in PR in the PR thing just <laughs> simply the best that's no. the slogan you're going for <laughs> yeah. uh, but okay. uh, very last question um, I saw on Facebook uh, may maybe after Cologne it was, it was a couple of months ago you basically posted an apology to your real-life friends and you're saying look guys counter strikes going really well it's getting really big I'm gonna keep doing this for another year I think you said in the post Oh yeah 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 so were you literally saying, I'm going to give this exactly one more year and I'm going to keep... Do you, do you feel like you're kind of denying real life friends because you're focusing well, that's, on kind of strength? The, the, the best way for me to be good in the past was always to, to put enough time into this game. And even since Germany, we've got back and you feel the, t the struggle being home and we've been trying to step up our home motivation because, yeah, the truth is, is if you want to compete with a lot of these Europeans, you got to try to emulate what they're doing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I had to tell some of my friends, you know, just realize that between streaming and practice, um, I'm going to have to pencil you guys in without sounding like a prick, you know. I'm going yeah. to have to find time for my friends and practice. And it's tough, but it's what's necessary to be at the top. So hopefully I can stay sane for the next year. Because I really do love it. It's just the more you play something, it, the, you know, the, it becomes more about winning and, and succeeding and it's not as fun for sure as it used to be when I was just a kid playing a game I don't enjoy playing games as much as I used to I enjoy playing Counter-Strike you know yeah. so it's a little bit different than it used to be but being here it still brings out the same excitement so I'm hoping to perpetuate those butterflies and, and bring some W's to America sounds good nice optimism I guess yeah yeah, yeah. well John thank you very much I will yeah, let thanks you go. for the interview uh, like quick I shout out to HyperX Logitech Alienware Need for Seed Kingwin and uh, Homejoy I said Homejoy Sidekick all of our great sponsors from Cloud9 we couldn't be here without you so I want to uh, thank you Cloud9 and all of our fans who support us watch our streams like us on Facebook and Twitter and Jack Westerman and ESEA thank you very much well remembered your sponsors yeah alright guys thank <laughs> right. you thank you very much uh, stay tuned to ESEA.net and ESEANews.com for full coverage of ESWC 2014